Mob 2020 Week 8. Welcome along, viewers. Welcome along. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. Will. <laughs> he jumped <laughs> in there. Um, right, we've got an easy one this week. For those of you who hate my voice and face, you are in for a treat. We are joined by Alex this week. Uh, Will will introduce her shortly. Um, but yeah, she's going to take you through a couple of things, having a chat with Will. Yeah. And then we'll be back at the end. So here's Will and Alex. So Alex, welcome, uh, our casework manager. Um, we thought it might be interesting for viewers to understand what it actually means when somebody connects with us who is homeless. Um, so maybe you could start by saying, yeah, how does, how does somebody present and what are the things that we can do um, almost immediately? Right, so when they come to the door, we ask the question, are, are you homeless? What situation are you in? Now we've got a lot of categories of homelessness, as you know. Um, so we can be sh they can be street homeless, they can be sofa surfing, they can be vulnerably housed. Um, currently we've got an awful lot of street homeless who are basically turning up here with nothing. Yeah. They're turning up soaking wet when it's raining, logically. Um, they're turning up with no sleeping bags, they've got no provision at all for them. Um, so basically we ask the questions. So if, it's, if the weather's bad, we will invite them in to have that conversation. So one of the things we struggle with is when they don't have a phone, for example. So again, what, how do we get around that? I think the key there is building up trust with them so they return. Yeah. So the, uh, it's showing that you care so they want to come back. And we, we've seen that amazingly so many times yeah. recently where they say, I'll pop back tomorrow, and they, they pop back. Yeah. I mean, one of the th we talk, we've talked about this a lot, Jack and I myself, in terms of the way people feel more comfortable to talk to us and that perhaps they do statutory providers. Uh, and we know what the statutory providers like the borough uh, and the police and probation can do. But in a way, we're, we're slightly different, aren't we? We're, well, we're not in uniform, for starters. Do, do you think that has a major impact on why people will open up to us? Absolutely. Actually, we're helping because we're working with those external providers, those other services. And we're also saying to our friends, do you know what, this time it might work. Yeah. So let's ring the council, let's, let's give it a go again. And then, so, so facing those challenges together is so much easier. We've got people who dare ring the doctors. Yeah. That's, who, that's what yeah. we're dealing with, people who are so scared. So, and we're celebrating that. Somebody's only come in this evening to say, I phoned the doctors myself. Wow. So, you know, that, yeah. and, and that is what we're dealing with, the wow of something so simple. And one of the things we wanted to talk about, and we've had permission from the individual, but we thought it'd be really helpful if you shared the story of one particular case study that you and I have worked with, or you predominantly. Yeah. So, so let's use it as an, exa his, as an example. Never seen him before. Yeah. Never, Friday night, he comes along with two of our regular people, um, and he sits in a seat, and he asks for some wipes. And this is, this is the key to where we are. We could have given him the wipes and let him go. But we didn't, we questioned. We said, actually, do you want to wash? Yeah. <laughs> do, you want to, do you want to come in and instead of, so we gave him the wipes, but we offered him to come in. And he came in and what, what we saw was he, the soles of his shoes falling off. His socks were actually almost adhered to his feet. Um, so lots of things that we helped him with. So we went down and whatever we'd got, we gave him. So it really, really grateful. At this point, um, had he had a drink? Yes, he had. You know, but this is the reality yeah. we're dealing with. You know, they're on the streets, they drink to cope. They, a lot of these probably didn't drink before, they didn't take drugs before, but now they're doing it to cope. And we often characterise what we do is going beyond and above, and that's not a criticism of agencies that are, are, are doing their level best, but we, we can do things in a slightly different way. How, how would you say that is absolutely sort of crucial to how we can we can support somebody i think listening and understanding but listening on the same level we're a christian charity we're called to care you know god calls us to love everybody and that is exactly what we're doing and that we do that by coming down to um, where they are and accepting them for where they are it's about outcomes for these individual friends and some of those will be literally as I've said about calling the doctors you know, we will set targets for our friends that some people would think well surely they should be doing that yeah. you know things that are major to them so I mean going back to the to the Friday night and um, doesn't matter if they're drunk you know, obviously we have to be we have to safeguard so we can't have people in who are high on drugs or coming down off drugs and we have to ha take, do that quick risk assessment and um, but a lot of the time they're in need so we respond to that need however we can to see the outcomes 
what more could you want? Yeah. That's what we're here for. You know, yeah. we're here to show people that we care, but we're also here to signpost. Looking back to the to the lad who came in on the Friday night, they come back, and we, when he's in, when he's sober, you know, when he can actually have the conversation, and we discuss. And actually, the sad, the sadness of it was, his mum had died the night before. And you know, and, and now he was ready to talk. You know, so now we have we've got him interviews for housing because he is street homeless. There's lots of thi- lots of things that we don't see behind the scenes, but we have those conversations, which lead us to getting towards the outcome. Well, I think I think we've invi- we're going to invite you back because I think uh, it, I want people to understand where and how we go uh, and where we take this 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 journey with this guy. What does that look like? Um, because I think we want to inform and guide people in terms of what they can do, yeah. um, but also give them a context of just how much um, depth there is behind House of Bread. So, Alex, thank you very much for being here. I'm just here. thinking about where what they can do. We get calls quite considerably um, about people who've seen people homeless. Yeah. And again, behind the scenes, what happens is your call comes into us and we then go out and visit them. Now, a lot of the time, they're happy being homeless aren't they? We, we know that. Yep. But to have that conversation, <laughs> but sometimes they're not and they don't know that we exist. And it's that outreach um, that, that we can actually go and help. But also, from, with regards to signposting, we can have somebody come along and we know that we can refer to, um, we've got somebody else who's come from a domestic violence bra- background, um, we can refer to Savannah, we can refer to Women's Aid, we can refer to St George's. There are so many places that we can refer to to get that outcome that everybody wants. You know, this is St George's want the same outcome as we yeah. do. You know, and it's about building trust. And as you said, the trust with us is far greater than, than services that they see as failing them over and over. But they don't understand behind the scenes how busy they are, yeah. that actually they can't do what they want to do ultimately so I think for us and um, being able to say to them do you know what they do want to help you they haven't got the resources that's what we're dealing with yeah. so if we can help in that situation with our resource then praise the Lord fantastic thank you very much Alex okay thank you back to us uh, and back to Jack and me <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you very much, Will, yeah, for thank, having well, a chat no, with Alex. Yeah. Thank you very much, Alex, for coming on yeah. uh, the vlog. You'll be seeing a lot more of her on these. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really important for people to understand who who we've got, what we do, and the, and the expanse of the work. So, yeah, uh, thank you, Alex, for being part of our team. Awesome. Wonderful. Yes, we're going to continue uh, the series in which Alex talks about different areas in which the case works important, why we do what we do, how we do it, all that kind of stuff. Um, and it's great to be hearing a different voice than just ours. So <laughs> thank you very much, Alex. We shall see you next time. Thank you very much, Will. It's a pleasure, Jack. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye. Goodbye.